So I just got this in the mail today. This is Nvidia's ancient flagship, the GTX 295, released all the way back in 2009. Back then it was a revolutionary car that performed extremely well, and now it's more of an odd curiosity, seeing how this is one of Nvidia's first attempts at a dual GPU card. But exactly how well did that go for them? So I mean, let's get this thing naked and see exactly what made it so special. And where exactly did Nvidia go wrong? So right out of the bat, one of the main things that confused me about this card when I looked at it was that, well, you can't really see where the other GPU is supposed to go. You can clearly see where one of the GPUs is, right here in the middle. I can also see where all the memory chips are, just by looking at this underside of this PCB. But I couldn't really see any of the GPU anywhere, and it really confused me. But then I just simply looked at the side of the card and realized what is going on here. This is a dual board card. As you can see, there's two PCBs here, each one with a GPU. And that's also why over here you can see that the power connectors are stacked vertically and not horizontally like they are on most cards. So I've been really waiting forward to just being able to completely take off the shroud, take off everything, and see exactly how such an interesting graphics card actually works. Is that really it? Is the shroud going to come off now? I think it just might, unless I missed a screw. No, I didn't. I just need to... There we go. Yep, there it is. There is the second GPU right there on the second board. And everything is being handled by a cooling system right in between the two boards. That is really insane. Also, something just fell off here. I hope that's not too important. So which one of these PCBs I should uh, unscrew now to try and see what it all looks like? Hmm. I'm just really hoping I'm not going to break this card by doing it. But hey, I'm doing it for views. So I guess it makes it all worth it, right? Right? Yeah, I think I just jinxed myself on this video. It's not going to do well, is it? I have no idea why, but this last screw just refuses to come out. Um, I could try a different... Bit to see if it will help, but I highly doubt it. Yeah, that one's way too small. Oh, there we go. There we go, finally. Okay, so that was a bit of a dub moment for me. I just unscrewed every single screw on this PCB, hoping I could, you know, take it out and have a look at and the other side of it. But then I remembered you have the display outputs right here, which are tied to both of the PCBs. So without messing up the display outputs, you can't even, you know, take out just a single one of these PCBs. And that is a bit of a design flaw, because, like, what happens if, like, for example, one of those goes bust? Actually, that's a very interesting thought, because, you know, in QA, when they're testing this car to see if it works and the factory, maybe they have some way of just, you know, removing the display outputs, or at least, you know, making sure that both cards aren't bound to it, so they can, you know, replace the faulty uh, PCV. However, on here, if, for example, this uh, board on here decided to die on you, would this one here, that has the PCI Express uh, connector, would it still work on its own? Or does it require having that second GPU all working and being detected? I assume no. It was still 2009 and that kind of technology definitely wasn't super sophisticated back then. At least we have a really good look at the kind of cooling that goes into this. So this is more kind of like a, a blower style design with just one fan that kind of just breathes air through this thing. And you can probably see exactly why multi-GPU cards haven't really been tried much since, at least on the consumer end. And that's because this thing barely called these two Tesla-based GPUs in here. So now imagine what kind of cooler you'd need to cool two Ampere GPUs. However, one thing that really interests me now is how exactly they're supposed to be communicating, because I am looking this thing over every which way, and I can't see any kind of cable between the two graphics cards and it has to be one because this one doesn't have a PCI Express connector plus this card has six pins of power this one has eight so they have to be sharing power somehow as well so that's interesting so if any of you know exactly how these two cards communicate where's the kind of cable between them please do let me know because again I cannot find it anywhere on this card so yeah, like I said, this is a very interesting glimpse into the past. So I hope you enjoyed looking over the GTX 295 with me. I will be having another full video on this card coming very soon, when I will finally be putting it into my Windows XP gaming PC. 
the real reason I bought this card in the first place. You definitely don't want to miss it, it's going to be an epic upgrade video, so definitely subscribe to the channel. If you want me to do more videos like this covering alt hardware, then the best way to ensure that will happen is to support my channel on Patreon, because even $1 a month goes a long way in allowing me to get stuff like this for the channel. I'd also love to thank my existing patrons Gavin Burns, Ryan, LKB, Meg Sumner, Blake Derake, Shane Allcroft and Lance B. Thank you guys so so much support truly goes a long way. Then you're also going to find our Amazon Associates links if you want to get some more uh, modern hardware than this. Plus and there's also our Discord server if you want to discuss this further with me or other people who are interested in tech. Plus then there's also our social media links as well. But anyway that's what it so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you remember to subscribe, like whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye everyone, good bye.